Hello folks, welcome to the channel and thanks for joining me. So today we're looking at a JVC RC545L and on the face of it, it doesn't look to be in too bad a condition. Um, I'll just give you a quick walk around. Most of the things are present and correct on here. Um, the main thing really that's uh, perhaps not ideal, um, cosmetically anyway, is the discoloration of the back panel you see it's gone quite yellow we might try and retro bright that if we can um, there's some sort of surface corrosion on the aerial there you can see but actually she's not in bad condition i think the main sort of physical damage as it were is the um is the handle there can you see how that's been um knocked bent and so that's sticking up in the air and needs to be uh, kind of straightened and sorted out so we'll try and sort that at some point um but as far as the sound's concerned does the radio work well technically yes let's just put it onto radio now lots of crackle from the pots um let me see fm let's see if we can get a signal on fm there we go and the stereo lights on as well so the radio is okay but it's very crackly you can see that needs to be sorted yep and in terms of the uh let's have a look for the tape so okay so we'll put a tape in now and press play it's kind of working um Rewind, play, actually the fast forward works, it's the rewind that sticks, so that, that stops, look, that hangs up when you try and rewind it. Fast forward is better, and play does work, so yeah, it's intermittent anyway. So basically what we need to do, I think, is... Uh, we'll get her open, clean the pots because they're very, very noisy. Um, see if we can sort that out, clean up the contacts on all the switches. Probably get the cassette deck out, check the belts over, and um, maybe check the idler tyre and stuff like that. If the re rewind isn't working, just give her a bit of an overhaul. Clean up the, uh, the casing, clean the aerial, straighten the handle. Right, let's get her open then. Okay, so first thing we'll do is get the casing open. Should just be an antenna connection now. On the back. So we'll just open this away. Okay, so we've got antenna connection to the board there. We've also just got the DC power, of course, to the board there. So we've got positive and negative like so. So positive to the outside. We've now got access to, to the board. And the cassette deck is buried kind of down underneath here, so we can see the uh, we can see the screws, the main screws for all of that through here, and the tape heads and everything sort of coming through onto the main board. It'd be quite nice if we can get everything out in one go if we can. Um, we know the radio works, so I wouldn't mind actually just going in and cleaning the switch first. So I think we'll go ahead and clean the actual band selector switch in there. I don't know if we can get to any of the other switches realistically, they're behind this cover. So we might have a stab at being able to clean those from here. 
um, but I think we might actually have to just get the whole whole unit out I think um, incidentally as well just as I've done this I've just noticed uh, maybe yeah there's a, there's a crack there in the base so it has been dropped at some point which will explain tiny little bits of um, plastic shrapnel but anyway let's go ahead and start getting this uh, whole mechanism out so we're just going to try and aim for the big screws at the moment because quite often it'll be the big purple or blue screws that are holding the actual main unit so a couple of screws out from the main mechanism there one down through there i can see one through the hole down through the circuit board here okay so we've removed the knobs there um, and there's a couple of multi uh, multi plugs and just withdrew withdrew the actual board back and up and out and then if we turn it over now we can get better access to the pots so we can see those to get some contact cleaner in and give those a proper good clean also there's some sort of gunk and stuff on the uh, actual tape mechanism so we can get in there and give that give that a nice clean as well um, and also indeed the heads whilst we're here it's much easier to get those cleaned um, I can see the idler tire there so or tires so hopefully we should be able to put some uh, give them a clean with some isopropyl alcohol maybe a little bit of rubber renew on there as well um, and then in terms of the main sort of drive belt um, yeah it feels a little bit i don't know if you'll see it actually in there um not very good light at the moment better look in the morning probably but um it does feel a little bit slack it's only a small square section one looking at it systematically i think we've got the two two small screws there one and two plus just i think these two as well so we may actually be able to get those free now so hopefully now if we're careful there we go so we can get access pretty much to the belt and you'll also see all the dust and dirt and cack that's in there as well so that will need to be sorted welcome back so today we're going to have a clean of the pots we're going to change the belt give the mechanism a good clean see if we can get some life back into the idler rubber as well so to that extent um, i've already got the belt off it literally goes under this plate so we loosened off the three screws just to get allow some clearance behind this bearing there um, and that essentially just runs between the two pulleys there so that's off I found another one that's very similar in size, not quite as robust, but I think it'll be okay. Worst case scenario, this one did actually work, so we might just put some rubber reviver on it anyway, um, just to keep it as a spare until I order a new one, but that's okay. So, um, also now I want to get in and clean the potentiometers and just give this thing a bit of a dust in and stuff as well. And we can also clean the heads because we can get to those now. So lots to do so let's make a start okay now very carefully just turn over the deck and the same again great that's much better so next job is we'll uh, put a drop of oil on the motor and just put in a small amount not much at all literally a couple of drops and we want to get right inside so that should find its way just into the motor there making sure we don't get any of course on the actual pulley because we don't want to be uh, greasing up that pulley 
Right, the other thing we want to do then, whilst we're here, is clean the heads. A little bit of isopropyl alcohol. And again, just carefully, you can see the heads super clear now. This is a perfect opportunity to get to them. And just gently rub the face with some IPA. Also going to just clean the capstan as well. And you can see the, possibly see the, uh, the, the brown, the ferrite or the, the sort of rust off the tape. So just give the capstan a good clean and also the pinch roller. The pinch roller itself doesn't feel too bad. Obviously it's got years of, of wear on there. But there we go. Good. So that's that's some of the uh, residue cleaned off the off the pinch roller. So that's okay. Good. Right, so the next little job then. I think we want to go in and see if we can clean the uh, clean the idler tire as well. So to that end, I think we'll just put some what we'll do is we'll clean the pulleys, clean the uh, idler tire and then put some rubber renew on there. Just using the pointy end of this uh, this Q-tip, and basically just trying to run this inside the pulley. You might see that You're just cleaning up any residue. The belt itself wasn't sticky or horrible, really, but obviously over the years it leaves a small deposit. So if we can get this as clean as possible, we get much better adhesion. Or much better traction I should say. Good so that's that's that and we'll do the same again just on just on the actual motor pulley now. Yeah so there's a there's a bit of gunk on there. That's cool. A bit more on the idler tyre. Now the idler tyre you might not be able to see very well um, I can just about get to it underneath. So a tiny little bit of uh, rubber renew there. And just seeing if we can rejuvenate the whole thing a little bit. Um, it's not a complete and utter teardown video today. There are gonna be things coming up on the channel, so do subscribe if you haven't already. We've got some uh, we got some old JVC M70s, there's an M50, I think, and an M60 that need completely gutting and redoing. So they will be fun. But right now, I've got a few other things in the workshop that just needed a bit of a refresh. So, that's the rubber renew. We'll let that evaporate off. The bearing surfaces are clean. So now we'll go ahead and get this new belt on. So as I say, I've got uh, I've got a spare belt here, very similar to the uh, the old one, and whilst the old one does work, it's not perfect. One of the screws has to come out, just purely so that we can get the belt underneath. Let me put that back in now. Again, just loosely. There we go. So there's the belt through. And now into the groove and onto the pulley. And a few turns just to straighten it up because it is a it is a square it is a square section belt. So it just needs to wrap itself back into position. So that's okay. Good. So that was easy. Famous last words, hey. So now we just tighten these screws back up. And these 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 screws actually mount just onto the uh, the pegs through the mechanism here. And sometimes you actually 
these are pre these are tensioned but i just want to check that the uh yeah that basically takes the free play or the end float out of the uh back of the flywheel there we go so the pulley's on the surfaces are cleaned new belt idler tire has got some rubber renew on there a couple of drops of oil just on the uh on the shaft for the motor there so that's that bit done right next job then let's move on and clean these pots now the pots were particularly noisy on this mechanism so i'm going to try now just to uh just to give them all a bit of a clean and the beauty of this uh this design is you can get in with the cleaner just give that a nice clean so we're literally just putting some and moving the switch to the full extent several times and you don't have to flood it also the same for the uh, for the switches Then we've got the uh, the selector switch here for I think this one is the mono mono stereo and biphonic I believe. So again, plenty in there. And then the function selection switch. So again, this is this is the tape and radio. And effectively, this is what gives the power to each of the different uh, different mechanisms. So it's important to give that switch a nice clean. Good, right, so there we go. So we've got the belt on, we've cleaned everything up, and we've cleaned the switches, cleaned the pots. So um, I really think that's about it. So we'll, let's start putting it back together again. So first up, we wanna try and get this cassette deck back on to the circuit board or vice versa, whichever way you want to look at it. So we've given the case a bit of a wipe over and also the top surfaces of the controls whilst we can get to them. So all that remains now is to check all the uh, cable ways remain clear because we've got to put those back in in a minute. Um, also the connection needs to be ready to go to here and also back onto the radio board there. So we'll just gently ease this back in. And also of course making sure that the, um, the eject mechanism is in the right place. Wiggle away, don't force anything. And there she is. So, just holding the door shut whilst we did that. Now it should, should work fine. There we go, that's okay. Good, so now then, that's back in. We just need to put our five main screws back in. So these are the ones that just hold the whole mechanism now into, into the case. Think of it in terms of layers or a sandwich. As I said, I've just recently done the JVC RCM90 um, and the cassette deck on, on that one is pretty fearsome. But if you think of it in layers and just build your way through in su successive layers, it's much simpler. So here now we just have this whole tape and control board mechanism going back. Yeah, it's quite a deep one in there with the access obviously through the circuit board. And then one for luck is just in this bottom, bottom corner down here. And that is all of the screws now back in. So multi-plugs connect back up one two down inside there 
and two more multi plugs underneath, which correspond to those pins there. And that's basically it. So next job is to just wipe the back, wipe the back down, line that up. Okay, so here we are then, bringing together the uh, the surfaces. If you remember, there are um, the three three different connections to make. The DC. Don't know if we can see this on the on the camera. Forgive me, but uh, we've basically got DC voltage to hook back up onto the board. So there's your negative and your positive. And then slightly off camera, again, apologies, but I need to get in just to uh, to connect up the antenna to the board, which is just, it's marked up as ant on the board anyway. So there we go, we don't want to force anything. So that's all of the connections made. And this is where I remembered I was supposed to fix the handle. So I bought this mission, take the back, back, back off because I need to take the back off. I need to take the back off to fix the handle, don't I? So we'll put the main mechanism to one side and actually start having a look at this handle first. You can see, you can see how bent and shonky it is compared to the other side. So we'll do that now. So there we go, that came off. Just a pressed steel clip retaining that. And there's gonna be some form of, yep, a washer as well, a little flat washer. Right, okay, good. That's why we've got to try and do this slowly. So the big washer goes on the outside there. There's a white washer on the inside and a black washer on the outside. So we should be looking for a similar one there we go so that goes on the inside right good so all we're going to do then is try and fix this now i can see now it's actually broken on that side and not broken on that side but well it's broken slightly but it's bent so let's see what we can do about that now so we're just going to try and unscrew unscrew the handle I think it does unscrew all the way actually. Yeah. Right, now we've got to be careful as to try and catch whatever bits come out. We may wish we hadn't bothered in a minute because this is the good side after all. Right, okay. It looks from the residue like someone's already tried to, uh, to fix that. It could be wrong, but that looks like some sort of crystallized super glue in there. So it may be that somebody already had a go and that explains why that explains why that bit of plastic there is actually adhered to the chrome cap and not actually just fallen off loose off the end of that one there, which it would have done ordinarily. So, okay, well that's okay because we'll, to be fair, we'll clean that up, possibly put a bit more glue in there and just screw that through anyway, so that'll be okay. Um, it's contained in a whole square peg there anyway, so that's not gonna, it's not gonna come out. This one on the other hand, needs to be bent back into shape. So, we shall, we shall go ahead, and get that out. There's the other screw. Yes, it should slide out in one piece like that, really. But there we go. So there's a tiny bit of repair to do just on that extrusion. But basically, the main thing we want to do now is, if I can bring them both into, into view together. But there we go. So this is the, the correct one. It's flat. This one arcs around, bows. So it needs to just be gently squeezed back that way. Um, and that should only be a little job in a vice. So I'm going to go and press that 
in a vice with some cotton or something around it just to squeeze it back into uh, into shape and I'll be right back. So there we go, much better. Just giving them um, a bit of a straighten and a polish and then I pretty, uh, pretty symmetrical and look just the job. So I think whilst the, uh, whilst the actual handle is apart, I think I'll just um, give this a quick wash down and get some vinyl cleaner on this and then reassemble the whole thing. So there's the handle rejuvenated. So um, basically a deep clean with a toothbrush and some soapy water and a bit of vinyl cleaner just to polish up the plastic. Um, and then a little bit of resin just to repair the plastic on the ends um, and the polish and straighten of the uh, chrome work. So there we go, almost good as new. So the handle's now back in its correct orientation, all repaired, um, clips are back in. I've also put a bit of resin on one of the broken nibs there that was broken off. So as per before, where we were rude, we rudely interrupted ourselves because we'd forgotten to do the handle at the time. This time, we're gonna connect everything back up and it should be right this time. So there's your DC voltage and then the antenna to its place on the board there. And then gently slide the two halves back together. I was trying not to capture all the bubble wrap in the middle. There we go. Good. And that should be okay. So what we'll just do now is just plug it in and test everything. And then we can reassemble it by putting the, uh, the screws together and give it a final wipe over. So we're just going to attach the uh, voltage now. And hopefully we go to radio and volume and tune. Keep them coming in today. I'm like from the cooking on TV. We eject that and find a tape to put in. So here we go. And play. So the quickest and easiest little fix then, the tape player wasn't working, so I've just attached it to a DC voltage so I can get the back off properly. And I noticed that the uh, the belt, when I put the belt on, it actually um, managed to find its way off the pulley. So it had gone underneath and that's why it was spinning and playing really slowly. So I've literally just hoiked it out from there and put it back on the pulley how it's supposed to be. There we go, so it's working fine now. So that's all it was. The blooming um, belt had slipped off the tiny pulley on the motor. Um, happens to us all, but at least that means that um, we know everything else works. Oh, incidentally, um, before the rewind didn't work either. So you can see it working beautifully now. You can see the counter going, um, and that's because we've managed to clean up the mechanism and um, basically put some rubber renew on the idler tire so that when the, um, the power transfers across to the uh, the rewind spool, it's now got some grip and it's working a beauty, so that's it then. So um, yeah, we'll just put it back together now and give it a good clean. So here she is, the JBC RC545L. So what have we done? Well, basically just a bit of an overhaul really. So the, uh, the potentiometers were all really crackly and noisy. So we've um, cleaned them and cleaned all of the switches as well. Um, I've just polished up the aerial as well because it had surface corrosion on it. The handle has been repaired. If you remember, that was quite badly bent and broken. So we've uh, disassembled that and reassembled and given it a good polish. That works a treat now. We cleaned the heads, oiled the, uh, the motor and replaced the belt. So yeah, that's all working now. Basically just giving her a good clean, make sure that she's ready for... Uh, a few more years of life really so everything's all tickety-boo the only thing we haven't done if i just turn it around is we were going to see if we can clean clean up the back a little bit more there's nothing wrong with it it's just slightly discolored 
um, and it might be good fun to maybe retro bright it or something to see if we can uh, actually bring some of the original grey colour back to that. That would be quite good fun for another project. But do please um, follow me on the channel, see what else we're doing. And we've got a whole bunch of uh, other boom boxes and things to look at and personal stereos. So do subscribe, hit the notifications bell. And uh, thanks very much for watching. Back soon. Bye bye.